John Fisher here in the studio. Hey, Mr. Wah. The men, uh, jack of all trades, a playwright, uh, a manager, and a theatrical director at the Theater Rhinoceros, an actor, uh, very present in the latest show, uh, Breaking the Code. So, John, before we get into uh, the details of Breaking the Code, tell us a little bit more about Theater Rhino, Rhinoceros. Why is it so important? And historically, what does it mean? Well, it's the first LGBT theater anywhere. It started back in the 70s when there was no queer representation in theater. And it's been going now for almost 40 years, since uh, 1977. And uh, we're the longest running queer theater anywhere. And we do plays about gay people, plays about lesbians, plays mm -hmm. about bi people. And I think it, in many ways, started a whole theater movement in the United States of uh, plays that explored these subjects. And now it seems like the subject is everywhere. By the time, it was nowhere. Queer movement went through a lot of changes. I mean, at first, there was a lot of resistance. But by 77, there was some acceptance in urban places like San Francisco. But then, of course, AIDS set in. Mm -hmm. And the theater had to survive that. And it was the first theater anywhere to do plays about the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The AIDS show was the first theatrical representation of the AIDS crisis anywhere. And that, in a weird way, even though it was a horrible disease, it revitalized the theater because people were fascinated with seeing the story told on stage. And since then, it's just been talking about whatever's current in the subject matter of queer life. We mm -hmm. did a lot of plays about queer marriage, mm -hmm. and now we're doing a play about Alan Turing, who's sort of re-emerged as a queer hero, a uh, forgotten hero from World War II. Mm -hmm. Basically, the man who won World War II by cracking the... German Enigma Code and breaking the U-boat uh, campaign against Great Britain. That's right. He's definitely coming back in the zeitgeist. Uh, do you attribute that to the interest in computer science? Is Absolutely. After defeating the Germans, he invented the computer. And that's definitely where we are now in mm -hmm. this world. The computer has redefined the world. And he was the man who had the first idea right. that we could have this personal computer that would solve our lives. That idea Turing took from the Germans as he worked to break the U-boat Enigma code. And then he invented the computer and then he was persecuted because he was gay. Right. Pretty sad story, really. Pretty sad story. Him. That was his reward for saving uh, Britain. It was a horrible time for queer people because, of course, in the war, a lot was allowed because of the emergency of the war, mm -hmm. people didn't worry so much about what you did with your personal life. He was given a lot of license during the war. They all knew that he was gay, but they didn't say anything about it because, of course, he was winning the war for them. Right. Then, of course, when the war was over, the old rules started applying and they, they persecuted him. After the war, he had a job at Manchester University and he was at Manchester University working with the computer, using it to do his own research. And he was also having relationships with trade, these guys he picked up in Manchester. And he would uh, pick up guys and take them home. And uh, eventually, uh, one of them got involved in a crime, and the police found out about it. And they offered this um, guy a deal. If he turned in Turing, they'd let him go. And he turned in Turing as a homosexual, practicing homosexual, mm -hmm. and he was persecuted. He could go to jail and lose his job at the university, or he mm -hmm. could take the drug treatment. Mm -hmm. And he took the drug treatment. They gave him female sex hormones. Uh -huh. and he that started, was a way to treat uh, that was homosexuality a way, yeah. in the 50s? Yeah, yes. It in was supposed, Britain. Yeah, it was supposed to suppress interest mm -hmm. in other men. Mm -hmm. And he started growing breasts. Uh -huh. And, I mean, he was basically killed chemically right. and driven into suicide by the government. And they continued to hound him. Mm -hmm. He was um, threatened by the police, by the government. And uh, eventually he just couldn't live a life without his sexuality, without mm -hmm. his openness. I mean, he was a very open man. Mm -hmm. He was way out of his time because of his intelligence. What a brain, what a genius. Dude. Yes, and because he was so open, um, he allowed other people to be open. He had sort of a community around him of people who understood what he was and were like him. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's just something about a genius. A genius is, ha, has a way of, I mean, that the, the very fact that he was so open about his homosexuality is part and parcel with his ability to create computers. And you are acting uh, the role? Yes, yourself? I'm Alan Turing, mm -hmm. yes. What are you learning from this, uh, from this particular uh, incarnation of John Fisher as Alan Turing? Well, for me, playing a tragedy, the challenge always is not to make it all negative and, 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 and glum. And I try to keep him hopeful as long as possible. I try not to have him become somebody who's obsessed with his persecution, with 
the fact that he's getting depressed about things, I try to play him as if he's fighting all against that and he's trying to be optimistic and looking forward. I think that that's important when you're telling a sad story, that it's not all sad. How would you say that uh, you're bringing him onto the live stage uh, mm -hmm. is uh, shedding a different light on the story? The play that we're doing, Breaking the Code, touches on many other aspects of his life that the film doesn't treat in depth. It really creates a link between his creativity and his homosexuality and his genius. And it also delves more into his personal life and his life with his, his, his relationship with his mother. He was like a child, like a, like a child with Asperger's. Brain was always firing mm -hmm. and that got him into trouble because he couldn't lie. And one of the reasons he committed suicide was he found out that the government was following him mm -hmm. and they were taking pictures of him wherever he went. No privacy. Uh -huh. At the end of his life, he had no, you know, anything he did. He mm -hmm. had sex. Mm -hmm. People were following him around. It's a very interesting play because it hops around. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the way, a, yes, it's like the way a scientist would write a play. As if you were in front of a, of a yeah. blackboard going from here to there. Exactly. Very well put. It's like a lecture. It's uh -huh. like, and you gotcha. start out, you start out with almost the ending just before his suicide. Mm -hmm. And then you hop back to when he was a child. Mm -hmm. And then you hop forward to when I he see. was breaking the German code. Even though it's jumping around, right. you follow the story. Just like cracking the code of Alan Turing. Exactly. You're right. It's like a mathematician wrote it. Mm -hmm. And it's a series of equations that we hop around in. Right. It's actually a very funny play in mm -hmm. many ways. It's got a lot of humor in it and a lot of sexuality. It's, mm -hmm. it's a beautifully written thing. And the, the author was very careful not to make it a real tragedy, mm -hmm. but to always show the positive side of, of him and the people around him. It's a rounder portrayal of his life. Anybody who loved The Imitation Game will love this play because they will find out so much more about him. And I think that that's the thing that's so wonderful about the play. It's like, if you saw the movie, you can go read a book about him or you can see a production which goes into his life in greater depth, which is exactly mm -hmm. what this play is. It's a beautiful play. Yeah. Are people thinking about the issues still? I think they are. People say, oh, the battles are won. We have gay marriage. But there's still a lot of young people because of where they live. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable. In this country, around the world, Russia, I mean, the battles are mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. won. And when are we going to graduate from that kind of thinking about people internationally? And even in this country, it's still difficult to be queer. San Francisco benefits a lot from how bad it is mm -hmm. to be queer in other parts of the country. And of so, course, now not everybody can live here because it costs so much. Exactly, so we have to make the of... whole country a nice place for queer people and transgendered uh -huh. and anybody with any kind of otherness. Right. The right to identify yourself by your own terms right. as a given right. Breaking the Code, it's at the Eureka Theater, which is in the Golden Gateway Center of downtown San Francisco. Production was a big success in its original manifestation back in March, and we brought it back so that more people can see it. Perfect, well, if, uh, if you folks want to uh, go check out Breaking the Code at the Eureka Theater, uh, it's playing August 5th, August 29th, uh, downtown San Francisco, and uh, thank you very much for uh, Thanks, visiting us, John. My Looking pleasure. Looking forward to seeing it. Great, thank you.